What's going on you guys, Fulster, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I'll be doing a Nidalee jungle guide. Um, she is pretty much one of the best junglers right now. I listed her, her top two in my, like, the, on the number two spot on the list of best junglers for this patch right now. So, if you still want to use her for the end of this, li like, a little bit of the end of the season, last week, this is the guide for you. Now, this is the rune base I use on Nidalee. I go for flat attack speed reds, I go for flat ability power quins, I go for flat ability power in glyphs as well. Then I take four armor seals and then five scaling health. Four armor seals will be enough for you to sustain like the early game damage wise in your jungle camps. Then the attack speed will help you a lot in just clearing your jungle camp faster. Because the way you clear with Nidalee early on is really fast like double buff camp and like invade. Or maybe start one of your buff camps and then invade the other buff camp, something like that. So having that extra attack speed with like a machete start is really good to clear way faster. And that's the reason I have this. So yeah, then um, the ability power is just right there to have as much damage early on as possible with like your spears and then also your cougar form Q to like 1v1 one one, one one enemy junglers as soon as you land them and catch them somewhere or maybe in ganks or anything like that. So as much early game power as you possibly can get in your rune page right here. That's the runes for Nidalee and now onto the masteries. This is the mastery page I use for Nidalee. I go for just straight damage with uh, abilities because that's where all your damage comes from in Nidalee. Then more damage early, more damage early, and more damage early. Then here, Sever Tree because you're going to be dealing a lot of auto attack, like doing a lot of auto attacks early on. This is going to help you speed up the clear of your like your red buff, blue buff, maybe like a Gromp or something to really clear fast at like the early stages. So Sever Tree really good. You won't be needing this later on because Nidalee literally just one shots camps with her Kruger. Like she throws a spear, she jumps in with W and just one shots the camp with her Kruger form. So this is literally just for early game and it's really key to have this early game because every single second you can save in the early game is the higher the chance you're going to be able to like get a first blood kill in like lane or kill the enemy jungler. So yeah. And then for this, I take Runic Affinity on Nidalee because I would like to have my red buff a little longer if I'm going to go for like 1v1 plays against the enemy jungler or maybe gank lanes or something because you have to remember Nidalee does not have any hard CC and... If you red buff slow someone, it's going to be a little easier to land your spear, for example. So having that longer is pretty good. Now, Merciless, more burst damage. This is, again, more damage early on with, like, clearing camps and just more burst damage in general. Then Precision, again, for more burst damage in general. And then you take Thunderlords for more, for more burst damage again. So it's all about that early damage and that really quick spear, Cougar Form, WQ, burst damage. Pretty much one shots any enemy early on, like... Up until like level 11 or something. It just depends what build you go for and how far you're ahead of course. But yeah. Now moving on to the item build. This is the item build setup I have for Nidalee. I start with the Hunter's Machete and the Refillable Potion. Now some of you guys might be like, wait, why do you start with a Machete over the uh, Talisman? Because you see a lot of Nidalee players start like a Talisman and then they just W trap the... The, um, uh, the Raptor Camp. Sorry, I couldn't get, get, get it there. So, the Raptor Camp, and then just clear it that by just resetting your WWW. But this is not the best way to do it on Italy, in my opinion. The best way to do it is start a Hunter's Machete, and then just use that to clear your red buff, blue buff, as fast as possible. And then maybe a Gromp, or just take the other, like, the enemy's blue or red buff, or just go there and just kill the enemy jungler. This just offers you a lot more pressure in the early game, and this is also why I have that attack speed in my runes and then if you combine this with also the built-in heal Nidalee has which also gives her attack speed on level three you're just gonna be like throwing spears so fast at the jungle camp that you're gonna get like this damage is gonna wrap up like rack up really fast and that's definitely the way you want to do it early on like the early few levels it doesn't matter anymore as soon as you like, have your first back done like at that point you'll have like the other half of your jungle light or like you will have the Whatever enchant you went for the red smite or whatever, you'll have it then and it won't matter anymore. But this is just the best way to power through the early game and just clear your camps as fast as possible. Or at least the key camps, because if you start with Nidalee and do a full jungle clear, which is possible with the other um, the other version, the talisman, it's possible to do a full clear, but it's not that effective because you're going to put out way less pressure early on. And if you don't put that pressure early with Nidalee, you're not going to be able to really do it afterwards because she does fall off into like the mid late game damage wise so you kind of have to put like a, a serious amount of pressure right right out the gate and then that way you can uh, get it going so that's why you go for that now core every single game for nidalee is the red smite runic echoes red smite on nidalee is really good because it helps you just like 
1v1 people, as soon as you land that spear, you also are really squishy, so reducing their damage output towards you is really good, but it also gives you nice, like, the Runic Echo obviously gives you ability power, that's definitely what you go for. And then movement speed right there. Movement speed's really useful in Italy. People underestimate this, because I don't know why, actually. They just underestimate it a lot, and the more movement speed items you can get on Italy, the faster you're gonna just be able to chase someone as soon as you land that spear and just hunt them down. So yeah, Runic Echoes, Red Smite, just probably the best way to go for. The other thing you could do is uh, go for the Warding one as well, if you want to have more vision control in the enemy jungler, or like, in the enemy jungle, and then spot the enemy jungler to maybe counter and like, inf keep invading them and keep taking their camps. Then the other one is also viable, but mostly for solo queue, I would say go for the Red Smite, because it gives you that, like, that 1v1 power, and it's a little more useful until you get to, like, the higher elos. So yeah. And then... Chalice. Or, so, sorry, Athene's Unholy Grill. The Chalice is uh, one of the parts. Athene's Unholy Grill is really, really essential in Italy. The reason for this is because um, it will allow you to heal, like, targets on your team for, like, six, 700 as soon as you get, like, a little bit of AP going or your E is max skilled. Like, it will heal so much if you have that Chalice. You're able to sustain your team throughout longer, um, longer team fights, longer stretches of sieges and all that. Like, Chalice is so key. Plus, Chalice only costs you 2100 gold, and at the same time, Chalice gives you a lot of extra uh, magic resist, ability power, cooldown reduction, as you can see right here. But the main thing is also that mana regen, and keeping your mana up is a, like it's really essential in sieges. Like, you can keep throwing spears, you can keep healing your teammates. This is such a good item on Italy, and should be picked up every single game on her. Then, boots, of course. I mean, I have Ninja Tabis as the example, but it can be Ninja Tabis, it can be Merc Threats. It's kind of interchangeable between those two. You can also go for Sorks if you want to, if you're really going for it and you're really scaling. You can go like Sorks into a Lich Bane or something like that and really get the damage ramping up and try to just kill the enemy as much as possible and scale and snowball off that. So those are the boots options. I just have one of the boots, for example. Now, then are, after like having your core set up, there are optional items. With Nidalee, if you're doing well, if you're doing like really well early on, it's really good to pick up a Sheen fast and then build that later into a Lich Bane. Lich Bane is a very good item on Italy because it will work with your, like your Q Cougar Form Q to execute people really easily. But it also gives you more movement speed. Again, movement speed is really useful on Italy because as soon as you land that spear, you're going to be able to chase them down pretty easily and just one-shot them. So in Italy, uh, like if you're doing well early, after like a Chalice, you would definitely want to be picking up a Lich Bane. And maybe even before the Chalice, you can pick up the Sheen part of it to like deal more burst damage that way. So it's, you can go like Runic Echoes into like a Sheen, into like a Chalice, and then build these three items, and then finish your Lich Bane. Get a lot of damage that way, and then if you're snowballing even harder, you can then follow it up with like a Void Staff, Death Cap, to really ramp the damage. You can get like 700 AP, plus at the same time doing that, going for like a Death Cap Void Staff to finish your build off, your heals are gonna exponentially increase as well. Like you're gonna heal someone for like 900 with a Chalice effect. It's pretty crazy. You're gonna be able to like... Save your AD carry from so many situations. But you have to remember that your heal also gives attack speed. So as soon as you just stay with your AD carry in the middle late game team fights, and they get engaged upon, you can just press 1 E, and they will be back to full HP from like 20%. It's pretty insane. Like, it's that's the way you want to play Nidalee later in, like later in the game, mostly. Just take a bit back and just help heal with your AD carry. And that's also why Arden is a viable choice on Nidalee. In, if you're not doing too well in most games... Arden can be like a, a solid, like, let's say you're doing well early and you p went for like a Lich Bane right here. And you're looking for like a fifth item. You can like go for maybe some magic resist if you need it. But you can also go for like an Arden Sensor to help your team. Arden Sensor was nerfed this patch, I know this. But you have to remember that Arden Sensor gives you plus 10% heal and shield power. It also gives you movement speed. And the key thing again, movement speed on Nidalee is, as I mentioned earlier, really good. So even if you're doing well, you can go like Lich Bane into an Arden to snowball it harder to get more movement speed. But to also be like kind of a support for your team. Arden Sensor is a good item to get still, but as a last item. Like as like a fifth or sixth item slot, you don't want to be picking up early anymore on pretty much anything. But it's definitely still good on Nidalee because also offers you the extra base mana region, which again helps you in like sustained fights early on. So, Art and Sensor is definitely a viable choice, and I do pick it up quite a lot on Italy in, in a lot of games. Now, again, there are so many item options. Literally, all these items, this is for, like, Magic Resist. If you're against, like, um, AP-heavy teams, you can go for, like, a Banshee's Veil. There's so many choices you can do, like, Banshee's Veil, and then Void Staff is just to deal more damage. You can finish this build off with, like, a Void Staff like this, and just... Like, walk over them. This build's really cheap as well, because Chalice and Arden only cost, like... 
23 and 2100 gold. Like, this builds really cheap, so you're gonna get there really, really fast, especially with Nidalee, because you farm your jungle camp so fast that you can get a lot of gold faster, and then this is gonna, like, you're gonna have this build by, like, 25, 30 minutes in game easily. So, yeah, something like that. So, you can be full build at, like, 25 minutes in game. Now, Ludens is like a late game item to replace your jungle item with. It is more useful later on because, it, one, it does give more uh, more movement speed boost, but it also gives you more ability power, and Red Smite late game isn't the great... Like, it's still useful, of course. Red Smite's still very good, but late, late game, you might as well have a little bit more ability power to just have a bigger heal to heal your AD carry with, because that's really what you're going to be doing late game. It's just sporting your AD carry a lot. Now, Zonias is obviously a viable choice as well. as like a defensive armor item against certain teams. There are so many options, but yeah, this is pretty much an Italy build. If you guys have any questions on an Italy build, make sure to ask them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if you've enjoyed the video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up as well. That's helped me quite a lot. And without any further ado, let's get it right into the gameplay now. Welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I'm playing Nidalee, of course, into a Shaco, which honestly is not that bad of a matchup for Nidalee at all. But the thing with it is, you can get cheesed with Shaco, since he is really fast at doing a specific buff camp, like his first one, because he can place boxes down. And then he has enough time to actually outspeed you and clear your other buff camp. So if you face this type of matchup as Nidalee, always make sure that like your top laner wards the other side or your bot lane wards the other side depending on where you start it's all like de just depending on the situation but you need the ward on your other buff camp this counts the same for a champion like Ezreal if you're facing those or like Jarvan's something that wants to invade you early on and actually steal or kill your stuff like it yeah you just gotta have that ward that ward's essential in this matchup now right here I decided to go and start my red buff because I think the most likely scenario is that a Shaco would start his blue buff, in my mind. Of course, this this cannot be like this can also just be the, not be the case with this guy, but that's what I thought this specific game. So I just started red buff. Also, starting red buff first is pretty good because you will mean that um, it's the first buff to respawn, and you can make use of that later on. So you're having red buff for longer, like starting blue and clearing down having red for longer is nice. And all, but on this side of the map, on the blue side of the map, it's really good to start both sides and just clear really fast up upwards and gank for your top laner. Because top lane is a really smart uh, lane to gank early on, since it's a very snowball-y matchup. And this, is, uh, this game, it will be an example of what I mean by that, really. So, as, as I mentioned before in my item build, I start with the Hunter's Machete, mainly because it gives you a lot more speed in the early game whilst clearing your camps. So, for that reason... Just pick it up, you know. Right here, this game, I made a slight error, though. I misclicked, as I can see right now. I actually picked my E second, whilst you should definitely be picking your W second, because it overall gives you a little, more, little bit more damage and mobility, and just a little bit of a faster clear. But picking your E second isn't that bad, since you do get the heal, and you do get, like, the extra attack speed buff from it, so it's, it's okay. It doesn't matter a lot, but W is preferable, and remember that as well. Now, right here, I'm just clearing this to hit level 3 and go top as soon as possible. I see that Akali is actually slightly pushing the Aurelia in. Aurelia has been playing this well and actually not pushing the, the wave out too hard. So, right now, all I have to do is just walk up. And you have to remember that Aurelia has probably has Q and E right now to be able to stun her target. So, that's literally what she does right here. She stuns the Akali. And even though the minion walked up randomly to block the spear, the Akali still had the flash. Because as soon as that spear makes contact, she'll lose like half her HP bar and she'd just be like, like she'd be dead in the water. So that's pretty much a free flash force out of a Narkali. And this is going to start being a very good advantage for Aurelia instantly. So right here, all I got to do is really just return to top lane again. Wait for Aurelia. Like, Aurelia literally just has to go up. She doesn't have flash right now. She cannot get past me. Her W was just used right there. So she literally had no way to escape me. And you just return. Like, it's that simple. Right now, my gank made sure that Aurelia got ahead, got the kill, got the first blood. And that Akali actually loses some of this CS into the turret early on. She probably lost like 3 CS, 4 CS in the turret. Yeah, she lost 2 to the turret and then Shaco took actually 5. She lost 5 farm. Even though she didn't lose the like the XP of the last one, she did lose like all the gold from it. So this put Akali just way behind Aurelia right now. Aurelia will have a nice XP advantage over her and then also has the gold advantage due to first blood. 
And this in a top lane matchup makes a lot of difference because top lane is very, very snowball heavy. Two good top laners. If you have a good top laner, they will know how to snowball it. Now right here, this is about the time where someone starts to ward, someone like the support. So I was like, all right, got to run bot lane as fast as possible to get the tri brush before they ward it. And that was actually the case. I got it in before they warded. Now, Soraka used, already used her flash. And she had to walk that specific direction to be able to get out. So all I have to do is throw a spear in that line and actually get the kill on her that way. Now, we go from mid lane. Zed manages to egg Anivia, which is really good. Because that gives me the opportunity to land a free spear on her. And at that point, you can literally just one-shot her. Because Nidalee's damage early on is really, really massive. Like, spear damage, execute damage. You can easily one-shot, like, mages and that. So if you have, like, an enemy Anivia and, the, and, it, and your mid laner manages to pop their, um, their egg... You can literally just one-shot that egg. Even if it's on under turret range, it takes you like three turret shots and you can still do it. So if you're like full HP, you're good. Now this Zed dives to Shaco. He does have Ignite. He does Ignite to Shaco and he gets the other kill. So at this point, we've killed everyone on our team once except the AD carry. And all due to pretty much me because I was I have a four kill participation right now. This is how you want to play Nidalee early on, like the early few levels. As you've noticed, I've only I only have four CS right now. But that is not the pro that, that's exactly how it should be. Because the early thing you want to do is just level up fast, level to level 3 fast, and gank. Like gank, gank, gank. And then as soon as you get to this point, you want to start full clearing. As you can see right now, I will get into a full clear here. Most likely, right? I'm obviously not 100% sure what I do right now. Some things might happen. But most likely I'm just going to go for a full clear. And as you can see, Nidalee is really fast at actually clearing these camps. Like right here. If you were playing like Ezreal or something, you would take much longer on this. She has so much AoE damage, it's actually really fast. Now, of course, this is still kind of slow for Nidalee standards. Because as soon as you pick up your Runic Echoes, it's going to be even faster. You're literally just going to throw a Spear W to camp and you one-shot the camp completely. But this comes pretty close to being able to just one-shot your camps. As, what, also, what you notice, by the way, every time I go to another camp, I throw a Spear first and then place a Trap. I throw the spear on the target and I place, place the trap. Trap has a little like prep time, a little delay time for it actually goes off. So that way you can just W the camp twice and get the cooldown refresh twice. Now right here I have 24 CS, now Shake was 27. This will slowly start getting more and more out of, out of control because Nidalee farms that much faster than Shaco, even though he does have the level advantage right now. But this is because I ganked early, like really ganked a lot early, got that 4 kill participation going. And now actually like a 6 skill participation going. And Shaco farmed a little bit more early on. So that's why he does have like a slight level lead. Or did have a slight level lead over me. But as soon as we killed him. Or like killed some of the targets. All that XP made up for it. And then I pretty much got ahead. So right here. So that's not mid lane. So I'm just quickly. Whilst clearing my buff camps back to back. I'm just quickly going to breeze past. And get some farm out of that. Now here the unfortunate event is that the Akali actually roamed down. I didn't have any vision over it and I just started my blue buff. And as soon as I used my QW and all that, I was pretty much done for at that point and I just there's nothing I can do against Akali. She has a lot of base damage and as soon as she hits level 6, she's able to actually just one shot me because I am pretty squishy as Nidalee and I don't have magic resist in like anything really. So I, I there was nothing for me to really be doing there. She was obviously going to kill me, but the, the like the good part for me is that she actually killed me. Whilst I still didn't do my blue buff. If I already did my blue buff, that would have been much worse for me. Since um, since then I would have lost the, the ability to sustain my mana really easily. Whilst losing red buff isn't the worst. Especially if I gank for specific lanes like Aurelia that have a lot of hard CC. So right here, I just get like... She was kind of low. Aurelia just recently traded the, the Akali. And I was like, all right, one spear from this range should definitely kill because I have Runic Echoes, which is pretty much like a free Ludens proc as well. So you can just go for that. I just red smite the Shaco to be able to have some burn damage on him. And then Aurelia is, th at this point, this far ahead just because of like the way I snowballed her lane early game and just give her that free kill and that lead over Akali. This is how you notice how top, ball is, top lane is very, very snowball heavy. And this Aurelia actually played it really well. She saved her teleport when she went to, be uh, like, to lane the first time. She used the teleport bot lane to snowball that even further, and then th this is what I mean by if you can put your top laner ahead and they are actually a good top laner, there's a lot of, that you can get out of that. Now, Nivia does roam upwards. She does have her egg up. Yeah, she does have her egg up right here. We are both really low, so tr going for this is like a really risky play. 
right there, my heal was still on cooldown. I do remember this. Like, for a point one second, it was still on cooldown. I could have saved the Aurelia if it was, like, a little bit uh, off cooldown a little sooner. But there's not much you can do in those situations. Now, right, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm maybe, like, waiting for a Nivea or something. I don't... I, mm. I find this pretty questionable because as soon as Akali like gets back the lane or something like that, I'm pretty much dead. So I should definitely be getting out of here. I think I realize that right now and just go down. Yeah, exactly. Alright, here, just see some camps that I can take from this guy. I'm gonna leave the small one up here actually because this um, counter jungling tactic works pretty well against that Shaco right now to put him behind. I could be clearing the full camp, which would be fine, but... I, at this point in the game, just wanted to make sure that as soon as he gets there, he doesn't get anything. Even, like, he could get there and then the entire camp respawned. Again, Akali tries the same thing, which is pretty smart against the Nidalee jungle. If you're a champion like Akali or a champion that has very good 1v1 potential against something like a Nidalee, then going for those types of invades that she's going for is actually pretty smart. Didn't work out for her this time because I'm actually too far ahead right now. If she tries to 1v1 me, she would actually lose this time around. But if she was, like, equal, that could definitely lead to me just dying straight up every time. Right here, I spot out the Anivia. I, since I popped her egg on top lane, I knew I could easily and freely go for this without too much risk because she is pretty squishy, and I do have my Ludens. I, I'm sitting on a lot of gold right now, but I do have my Ludens. I do still have a lot of burst damage, and I can get away with just one shotting her straight up. Also, Anivia wall doesn't do too much against me because if I just time my W correctly, then there's nothing re really for her to block, unless she is an absolute god and blocks it at the exact right time whilst like. There's like a split second she can block it and I'm just completely blocked out, but you, you gotta take some risk, you know? Now right here, I pick up a very, very core item in Nidalee's build. I had pretty much exactly the amount of gold for it, and it's, um, it's an Athena's only Unholy Grill. The reason this is such a great item, as I also mentioned earlier, is that it just increases your healing potential by so much, whilst also giving you ability power, magic resist, CDR, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty much all the stats you could want on the uh, Nidalee. Whilst at the same time just increasing your healing ability, which is then going to increase, like, the health for your teammates. And since you're not that great of a team fighter, giving your team that extra health is actually very, very beneficial to being able to contribute a lot more to team fights. Like, healing your AD carry for, like, 800 mid to late game team fights is actually insane. Now, right here, we just want to look to pick up this turret. Aurelia roamed down, maybe teleported down. I think she teleported down. We already have two turrets on top lane, as you can see right here. Aurelia just, like, this matchup snowballed out of control from just putting her ahead early. And this is why I tend to go for the, those early um, those early jungle rotations, as I mentioned earlier this video. And as you saw, like, the red into blue into grump, into instantly gank, 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 gank. Instead of completely full clear and then start ganking. Because the early things matter so much. Like, Irelia is two levels up on the Akali. Akali is out of this game. Shaco is also out of this game because we actually counter, jungle, uh, counter ganked him pretty well with the top laner, with his teleport and all that. So, yeah. That is definitely something you got to keep in mind. Obviously, you, you can run into those things where your top laner is just really bad. And then ganking for them, at, like, you will instantly notice. As soon as you do a, a quick rotation upwards and the gank doesn't really go too smoothly, you will instantly notice that ganking for this specific top laner is probably not going to work out too well. And then you can just swift your, like, switch your focus really fast to another lane. So for that reason, just ganking a lane early is really beneficial just to know if they can actually follow up ganks properly. And then you will know if... Um, if it's actually worth going to that lane again. Now right here, I just gotta keep my farm going. I've not been farming a lot this game, mainly because we've just been... Like, I've been kind of snowballing with my top laner. I've been trying to help him out in this lane and then rotating bot with him at the same time. And then rotating mid again and all that kind of stuff. So my farm is slightly lacking this game, but this is the type of games where it doesn't really matter too much. Because I did get the early lead. If you didn't get the early lead, then another strength of Nilly would just come out and she would just have like... I would just be on equal farm with my top laner right now. Like, it's it's that crazy. You can literally just take your camps, take his camps, keep doing it. And then that would be the other strength. But this, like, right now, because I got the early lead, I don't have to focus too much on farming. I just have to focus on rotating with my team, rotating with my top laner. Now, right here, this is a situation where I just cannot help the Aurelia at all. She got ignited, so meaning that if I walk up to heal him, I will, deal, I, I will heal him a lot less. And at that point, I was like, all right, since you got ignited, there's nothing I can do. Because if she didn't get ignited, I could have healed her for like four or five hundred, and we could have actually won that fight, and then I would have gone for it. But because of the ignite, I didn't walk up and kill myself, because 
I could have healed her for like 200. And the champions weren't at the HP range where that would be re re like a realistic play. So that's why I didn't go for it. Now, as you can see also, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I um, earlier I placed the pink ward around here in the early side of this jungle. Then after um, actually moving up, knowing that I didn't get spotted, I moved up here. I had another pink ward in my inventory and I actually placed the pink ward up further or control ward. I should have placed it a little bit further that way because then I would have seen this entire thing, but I, I kind of misclicked, I suppose. So I placed it a little further in the jungle so I have like more deeper vision. And that's actually like something that like take take note of because if you place the vision deeper it's gonna actually you know like you're gonna know sooner than when it's a problem so if you have more control place your vision deeper that's why having like two control wards at a lot of situations is actually very very good so let me go back to myself all right here again like you don't see me farming too much because the main thing is i just gotta rotate with my team and get those turrets get that pressure going and just snowball the like from the early game out of control I had the lead in the early game, I got the, er the gank on top lane, I rarely I rotated well, we got the gank on bot lane, so all you gotta do is rotate right now. Now right here, that was just me with the support, so it wasn't really something that was gonna happen. Also, I'm sitting on quite a bit of gold. I have 1400 gold right now, and Aurelia was in base. Aurelia is really the person I wanna play with right now, since I got her head, and she actually walked away with that lead. So if I stand right next to her and play with her, I can just sustain her up, keep healing her up, and then just help her win fights, and win fights together. All right, here we start Shaco somewhere around this area. So it's like, all right, let's take control of it. I'm right here again with my Aurelia, making sure that I'm with her to, um, to just walk over them, really. Now, we both walked down because the Twitch didn't walk up. He didn't have, really have the time to walk up. And then we both walked down because we pretty much predicted the Twitch to walk down at the same time. And as soon as, like, he showed, I just landed the spear and he's just instantly dead. Now, I'm sitting on a lot of gold right here. I have 1,900 gold, so I definitely should look the back quite soon. But their blue just respawned, so I'm actually kind of wanting to pick this up. Chaco is assist pinging this right now, though. And he actually does get it. My smite was on cooldown, his wasn't, so there was not much I could do. And right here, because I didn't back yet and I don't have any boots yet, as you can see. If I had any type of boots there, that Chaco was gone. But because I didn't back yet, I didn't have boots and I couldn't catch up with him and he actually survived it. So at this point, I really soon decided to start backing, I think, because I, I just... After that Jacob play, I quickly noticed that I just have to get boots. And I can't really stay in too much longer. So right here, I knew that maybe a Twitch would come in since Yanivia kind of walked up. So I walked a little bit back and kind of waited for the Aurelia to walk up a little further. Now, Jenna gets low, but as you can see, the 500 heal. That's such a massive heal with the Chalice. Like, it just completely sustained Jenna back up to actually stay in this fight. Now, my heal was still a little bit on cooldown here, so I couldn't help the Aurelia survive. Again, but it's, it's just something that's like it happens, man. <laughs> now, af after this play, I pretty much instantly had the back sense, especially since Akali showed up. Like she can literally just army and one shot me. She's probably barely out of our range from uh, from this guy right here, right now, and that's the only reason I survived. This. Luckily, this is a Jenna. If she was a slower support, I would have she would have probably R to the Jenna and then R to me and it killed me and then Jenna, or not Jenna, but then like a slower support, like uh, I don't know, I don't even know. Something like a Soraka or something, I don't know, yeah. So right here, I am sitting on 2600 gold. I definitely have to back. Right now, I'm gonna definitely look into picking up my tier 2 boots with a Sheen. Because the tier 2 boots will allow me to help speed, like, catch those Shakos that I just missed. I landed the spear, but because I didn't have any boots, I wasn't fast enough to actually catch up with him. So that's definitely gonna help in that situation. And then all I have to do right now is build into a Lich Bane. This specific game, Lich Bane, is actually very good as an item slot right now. Because I am actually very much ahead. I have, I'm have i 5-1 and 6. I do have 81 CS, which is reasonable. But it could be more. It could it should have been like 130-ish. If this wasn't that snowball heavy. Maybe even more. Maybe like 160. But so since I was rotating this much, there was really nothing for me to... Like, it wasn't really logical for me to farm as much. Now, as you can see, you, you just see how much power Nidalee has in clearing her jungle. Like, she pretty much just completely deletes these camps really fast. And that is the strength of Nidalee, and this is also why you can have massive CS numbers. And, like, massive experience leads as well. I could be, like, level 15 right now if I was AFK farming. Which, of, or, of course, this game wasn't realistic. But some games where ganks are just not happening, it is actually realistic to do that. And then that's the way to get ahead. That's the good thing about Nidalee, you can get ahead in both ways. You can get ahead by farming or just ganking early, it just depends on situations. If you get the ganks off, then it's good. If you don't, then well, you might as well just farm at massive speed, right? 
Now right here, Infernal Dragon spawns, so I'm like, alright, um, I'll just let me my team do their thing and I'll just solo this real quick. It's a really good dragon to pick up, like... There is no better dragon in the game, really, scaling into the later stages to have the Infernal, because every single little, like, every little bit of damage is gonna matter in team fights a lot, especially whilst you're, e whilst you're even. We're not that even this game, but this is gonna help us snowball even further over these team fights and then just work that way. Now, here, right there, one rotation on the Gromp, like, nearly one shot it, and then it, it took me, like, what, six seconds to clear that Gromp, maybe? Five seconds? It's nothing. Like, that's such a good, that's such a good time. Now right here I'm just pushing bold in, making sure that this pushes in. I know that the, the I noticed that earlier that the vein and the Zep were in base, so there was really no way for like no reason for me to group instantly. I might as well clear bolt for a little bit, keep it pushing more that way, and then group. Because then as soon as I get there, Vayne will get there and Zep will get there, and then the fight's more realistic to happen. Alright, go back for a little bit here. Now Aurelia did die because she overextended pretty much like that's pretty much the only reason. She overextended and just there's nothing to do now right here he shows up jenna hits the tornado which means that i can hit a free spear and as you as you can see right there as soon as i hit the spear i just go on him flash w with him because i need to get in range and then all i have to do is just e eq him and he's just dead like as soon as you land that spear on nidalee it's over and that's why landing that spear is essential and it just has to happen now right here my heal was still on cooldown for a little bit so i couldn't heal the vein but right now you can see that i'm actually going to heal the vein for a good amount like 400 health right there and i don't even have that much ability power right now right now and this is just the simple power of just snowballing with Nidalee in the early game. This is how to play it. This is pretty much the best type of game tactic to go for. And if this doesn't work, if you don't get like the, the ball rolling as I just did this specific game, then farming is always an option. And then just, you can build a little bit more support heavy to help your team fight, like help your team fight stages because you're pretty much weaker in team fight stages as in Nidalee. So if you can just farm and then just get a lot of defensive support items like uh, Arden Sensor, a Chalice. Like, maybe even a Zonia has to help you survive, like, Burst Champions and all that stuff. And you could be more useful in teamfights that way and still win. So there's a lot to be said for those types of situations. If you guys have any questions about Nidalee, make sure to ask them in the comments below. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, because this does help me quite a lot. And, yeah, if you want to play Nidalee for this last week of the season especially, make sure to do so, because she is definitely a good champion. She is definitely worth picking up, if you can manage it. I mean, I know it's only a week, and I know that Nidalee is quite a difficult champion to learn, but yeah, I think you'll have great success with her. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!